Hey y'all, what's up? In today's video, we are going to go over DTG Pro's manual on Acro Rip version 10 and 11. Um, I am literally just going to go through the manual and visually do this for you guys. Um, nothing that you can't find by just looking at the manual. However, I've been asked to do a video, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, this is Acro Rip 11, however, um, it's pretty much the same thing with just a couple of differences. Okay, here over to the top left is the pull down menu. This is in the middle here is the display or user interface. Over here at the left bottom is w the file information. You're going to have all the information on um, on what your file is, color, um, original file size, yada yada. Here at the bottom going across is a thumbnail of all your recently or currently opened images. Over here on this side over here is the settings adjustment panel and a majority of your settings will be changed and done through this panel here and at the bottom you have the settings tab for each of the different uh, setting sections each tab pertains to a different page of settings and features for your print drop so you will have printer color white and layout and if you hold and move you can uh, or hold and drag you can lay them out however you'd like or even double up um, on the on the canvas right here the file menu provides some basic options to configure your printer the display area and to perform some basic printer maintenance like printing a nozzle check or performing a uh, print head cleaning the option, the menu option under file will be explained here shortly. So you see that this is the file option. All right, reload, which is F5. This menu will allow you to reload all of your images you have opened in AcroRip. If there has been any changes to these files, the new information will be updated in the new interface to reflect them. That's pretty cool. The close menu. This menu will close your images that you currently have selected and are viewing in the interface. And close all will completely close all the images you have opened on AcroRip. So this one will close just the one you're looking at. And this one will close um, all the all of them. All right, and right below, sorry guys, right below that, we have the page margin setup. Sorry, give me one second. I have to, I just spilt my Celsius. All right. <laughs> All right, the page margin setup. This menu option will allow you to set the page margins for your print job. Should you want the image to always be printed a certain distance from the top, the left, or the bottom, on this dialog here, this is where you will um, see all of your saved, a list of your saved margins and all of your margins and where to get it. To load a previous margin setting, you will select it from the drop down menu and click the initialize button to change the current margin settings then you would need to um, change the left and top and you would do that by telling acro rip where the margins um, you want them placed or where you want them to begin the values are entered using measurement settings and you have configured under the unit under file OK, 
okay so you would change it here if you wanted it to start one inch from the top from the left one inch from the top and you would hit initialize if you want to save it for later you'll save and then you can come here and do what you got to do once you are done you would hit ok over under the unit section here is where you can change it from millimeter centimeter and inches you can do your nozzle checks from here f11 head cleanings now this dry mode is specifically for um, Acrip to better control the print head when you're UV printing and this is to move the print head further to the left or right of the plate and so that the UV light attached to it is able to fully pass over the plot the plate and to reduce the banding issues of your print um, again this is for UV printing but I did want to point out in case some people want to know the F10 is print this menu will bring up a print dialog box, which I'll show you right here. And this is where all your print settings would be. Um, you can do last minute changes right before printing, or you just go ahead and hit print. Okay. The edit menu. Which is over to the top right. I'm so sorry guys. I'm literally sticky. I need to focus. Okay. The top right or top left is the edit menu. And this option will place the left top corner of the image in alignment with the top left corner of the page or plan. And same thing. Um for all the other options it will align vertically it will align horizontal right in the center um, this is where you would go rotate just rotates the image you would continue to do so you can do that by also right clicking on the canvas and you'll have those images available the add image option is only available um, on Acro Rip 11, not 10. All right. Under view, we have the status bar. This menu option will enable or disable the status bar, which will be displayed at the bottom of Acro Rip window. This bar is used to provide information regarding the software status. Um, so it'll just be down here. Um, the grid, this menu option will allow you to configure the intervals that the lines are drawn on the grid measurement settings. So you can um, show and snap to the grid settings. This menu option will enable and disable alignment gridding within the page preview window. And snap to grid is this menu will enable or disable snapping the image to the grid with making adjustments to its placement on the preview plane. All right, when we go to guidelines, this menu will open guidelines dialog box. Within the dialog box, you can add a number of vertical and horizontal guidelines to page preview window. To do this, you just type a number within the size of the paper you have configured under layout tab, then click add button. You can change the location of the guidelines by selecting it from the list and changing the value in the edit box and clicking move. You can remove a guideline by selecting it and clicking delete or clear button. When you click OK button, the guidelines you have will set will be displayed in the preview plane. You can adjust the placement of any guidelines you have created by hovering over your mouse over the guidelines and then left clicking and dragging to where you would like to move it. So hover over. Let's close this window. And that has to be uh, Yeah. 
an acro rip. Yeah, so that has to be an acro rip 10 setting, I presume. Lock guidelines. Click the menu item. It will lock your guidelines you have placed on the preview window, preventing them from being moved until you unlock them. So you can't click on them and move them if you have them locked the show template um, or I'm sorry the template this menu uh, will open the templates dialog and this is where you can configure your settings for um, one of the three templates you use in the project so let's go if you see we have a square or a circle and this is where I tell it to create a template so I know I am within the margins of the sheet and I don't have to worry about all that. Okay, in the image plane here, we're gonna just, we're literally going to dissect the entire thing, even if it's common knowledge, just so everyone is aware. The image preview and information panel on the left side of Acrorip uses useful information about the image you have selected and are working with in the main window. The following details are provided about the image. You have image size. You have resolution, which refers to the dots per inch of the image. This information is meant strictly for printing. The higher the resolution, the more detail can translate to the print. Um, then you have mode. This mode refers to the color space that the image used was created and when it's saved, which tells an image editor that color more, what color more to use to display the image correctly. Okay. File size. This just refers to the file size in kilobytes or megabytes. And the original size refers to the original size of the image converted to the unit of measurement you have selected under unit. Now, there is a tip on this uh, that Acro Rip has. It says it is recommended to alter any large images that you may plan to print to reduce image dimension and file size to be as small as possible while increasing the DPI of the images so that the detail of the quality of the images is retained. An image with dimensions under 2000 pixels uh, in parentheses 6.5 inches for either width or height and under several megabytes is a good size to work with. Since you can scale the image up in AcroWhip, we do not need to start with an image that is the size we intend to print out. So what that means. I know sometimes you guys get these weird um, cloud-like uh, texture on some of the prints and that's because the DPI is through the roof. Okay, so bear in mind that uh, images with under 2,000 pixels and six to or five, six to six and a half inches um, is ideal. Okay. We are going to head over to the settings panel. Right over to the right. This area, you um, have four tabs of configuration options, layout, printer, color, and white configuration settings. All right. To mirror the image, you will right click and click on mirror. Um, under the edits tab, you have the mirror, but when you right click, you can rotate it as well. This will rotate the image by 90 degree clockwise, and of course, everything else will be left right. It will move the image to the corresponding area. Over here under paper size, the page width allows you to set the width of the page or the platen you will be printing on. 
the page height allows you to set the height of the page. The output position is adjusting the setting that changes the horizontal starting point of the plane, and that would be the X. So I want to start it right at the top, or right to the left, as you see, zero would bring it to zero. I'm gonna put it back. And yellow, or Y would be the top to bottom. So you, wherever you want to start that, um, you can tell it where you want it to start. The output size. This is the actual size of the image that you want, okay? Um, adjusting the settings will change the width of the printed image on the page. And adjusting the setting will print, or will adjust the height. Now, equal portion. This setting has two options, and it's either true, and it will keep the scale of the image intact. And what does that mean? So when it's true, and you move it, it adjusts width and height together. When it's on false, and you adjust, you can adjust width and or height individually. So adjusting width doesn't mean it will adjust height and vice versa. When you put it true, it is scaled to the true size. So let's say we had a circle here and you did untrue and we go four by eight. As you see, it's no longer a circle. It's an oval. So keeping it true, um, we can adjust it um, from both areas to keep it portioned. Sorry. The distribute button, which is here, this is where you will repeat your images. Let me move this off the canvas so I can put this on here. X is left to right. And you see I have two and you don't see it because it is set to inch 23 on the plan. So I would have to change it to the a uh, little further than the width, uh, um, you know, of the actual image. This is 8.5, so I want 8.7 or so. And then if you click on Y, it will have the bottom. And again, once again, you will adjust this to accommodate the size of your image. You want three, you want four, five. That's how you do it. Okay, now this is where, I, this is exciting. Um, for me so it's one of my favorite features and the pattern you can set to normal or you can set to even number rotate what does that mean I'm about to show you let's say this was four inches and I'm going to do let's just bring it down so we can get a few of them If you see, it is flipping every one of these. Um, what would, hold on, I'm trying to find an image that would actually make sense as to why you would want to flip it. Yeah, we'll go with this one, just to show you. Even number rotate. Let's delete one. We're going to make these small just for obviously showing purposes. And we're going to do a couple of rows. And as you see, now obviously there's not enough spacing between them. Now there is, 
And as you see, it has um, flipped every other one to make more room. So it takes 10 inches. If I didn't have that, it still take 10 inches, but then they would all be touching. So when you flip it, it takes every other, so every even number and rotates it. So like, let's say you had a heart, um, a heart would really rock well. One second, uh, don't have any hearts. Uh, yeah, so a heart would really do well with this because it would take the pointy parts and put them in between, you know, the, the widest parts. So wh that's what that is. Go back to here. All right. And then again, always pay attention to the rulers because um, this will tell you if you are past the boundaries. Then the printer tab has a number of settings pertaining to configuration to the printer. There are several settings under this tab that significantly, significantly aim at the quality of the printed image. Now, guys, this is where you guys need to listen up because this is some good information here. Incorrect settings in this section could compromise the quality of the printed image or potentially cause damage to the print head guys <laughs> this is why i wanted to read the manual because i knew i wasn't going crazy nonetheless let me take a sip all right so over here the rip boost option is specifically for the Epson L1800 and it provides a performance increase allowing the 1800 to print faster than the normal provided driver by up to 40%. Okay. Many times it is possible to use a printer that does not have the listed drivers under Acro Rip. Some printers that are similar to a model number close in release often have the same or similar features and share the same drivers, making it possible for you to use an unsupported printer with a driver that is already available in Acro Rip. Please research the printer model you plan to use prior to attempting to use an unsupported printer in Acro Rip as there is the potential for the printer to not function with the driver for a different supported driver as some printer models even those released in succession sometimes have a completely different feature in printing options the port so here's where you would select which printer the port is which this drop down is every printer virtual printer that is um, added to your pc or installed to your PC, here's where you would choose the port that your printer is connected to. Okay, the check paper size, if set to on, you want to turn it off. You'll have more problems than it's worth. And the resolution, this is, guys, if anything, just stick through this portion because I most people ask me why I use mixed dots and it, it's a specific reason okay resolution white the setting changes the print resolution for the white layer of your print should you use one in your project there are four different resolutions to select which will resample the image you are printing adjusting the dots per inch of the image that is going to be printed resolution color this setting changes the print resolution for the color layer of your print should you use one in your project there are four different resolutions and the same thing it will resample Okay, now, let me read this to you. 
When changing the print resolution, you will also need to adjust your ink output as well to address the increased number of dots per inch in the image that are being printed and provided enough ink to provide a dense enough layer of ink preventing the printer image from appearing dull or faint. The recommended base settings for ink limit settings in the color configuration are 15 to 20 percent at 1440 by 1440 and 25 to 30 percent at 2880 by 1440. These are considered to be the lowest necessary values to provide a quality print. The, the settings can be adjusted as necessary to further increase ink output providing a stronger quality print. Okay. The quality of the detail in an image will not be increased by increasing the DPI of either the color or the layer white layer. It is recommended to use DPI settings that is closest to your DPI of the image you are using for best results. Increasing the DPI of an image layer is not the most effective way to increase the density of the layer that's being printed. To best achieve a denser layer of ink, adjust the ink limit setting under the color tab. Increasing the DPI will increase the print time for your image significantly, as the printer will have to print more passes for each row of the image of higher resolution. Okay, now there's still more information I want to read regarding... Um, this thing here. Feed, here is where you would change it. Um, roller sheet, I change it um, based on what I'm doing. By direction, this will cause the printer to print at, as the head moves back and forth during operation. Unidirection, it will cause the printer to only print as the print head passes from left to right. Unidirection, right to left, which is 80 to zero. This will cause the printer to print only as it passes from right to left. Using unidirection, printing actually provides a slight print quality increase but will take significantly longer to print the image as the print head will only print when passing one direction. The wave, this is um, used for UV only and it's to help prevent banding issues which are caused by timing issues in the curing process of UV ink. And again, if you're printing with UV, this is a known issue to occur with printers that use a DX5 print head, UV printing, more so than those who are using a DX7 print head. Enabling these, this setting will um, help you to reduce the banding issues with UV printing. Now, guys, this is the T right here, what I'm about to tell you. These dots mean the most of anything, okay? White and colored dots. The ink section allows you to configure the ink droplet size for both the white and color channels independently of each other. These configurations in combination with the print resolution will allow a finer level of control over the printed image detail. The following setting options are available. We're going to go, they both, they have them both, so I'm just going to go over one. Mix. This will have the printer use a mixture of all the available droplet size when printing, allowing for the best coverage white, also being able to retain a finer degree of detail in the image. The small will have the printer only use small, medium, and large as well. Medium and large will have the printer use a combination of medium and large droplets. Small and medium will have the printer use a combination of small and medium print droplets. Okay. Using different droplet sizes allows for a higher qu quality print. However, the larger the drop size that is used for printing will cause a slight loss in detail because the droplets will be too large for super fine detail in images such as photos. 
using large droplets to print images that contain little detail or used in the printing of the white layer as white is denser than color may not jet properly using smaller droplet size or may not jet properly using the smaller droplet size okay let me reread that again using smaller droplet size which can cause print head damage using mix or so we're going to go mix or small medium Droplet size for color output should provide the best overall quality for your printing, allowing you to preserve as much detail in your image that you are printing. Okay, let me read that again. Using different droplet sizes allows for a higher quality print. However, the larger droplet size that is used for printing will cause a slight loss in detail, okay? So any of the large, medium, large, medium and large, which most people tell you to put it on medium and large, will reduce the quality of your image and reduce the detail, okay? While it is possible to set the ink droplet size for both white and color layer to large or medium and large to try to get around issues with clogged print nozzles. Okay, most people use it when they have banding and what you're doing is you're masking the problem. Okay, let me read that again. While it is possible to set the ink droplet size for both white and color layer to large or medium to large to get around issues with clog, this is not the best practice as it can cause damage to the print head with prolonged usage of the setting. Damage could be caused to the print head depending on how many nozzles are clogged. It is strongly recommended that you manually flush, flush your print head with warm print head cleaning solution to remove blockage from the print head instead of using a larger droplet size to compensate. Okay, so the ideal setting here to get the most detail would be mix or small to medium. When you are using uh, the small, you are causing print head damage. Okay, using a smaller droplet size, which could cause damage to your print head. So using the small causes damage to the print head. Using the large, you're masking your nozzle clog and will cause damage to the print head. And not to mention if you don't have a clog and you're just using it, um, you're losing detail information. So you want mix or smaller medium dot to keep the quality and your image um, detail. All right, over under the color tab, here's where you will set up your ink configuration. If you do not do this at first, you will not be able to print with white because it will have the standard ink colors that the printer actually came with. And with anything else, these channels are from left to right. So if you're looking at the printer, standing in front of the printer, it is from left to right. If you have two bays, it is from left to right. Um, and if you share the MKPK, um, you don't have to worry about telling it where MK is. All right, and ink limits. I'm just gonna quickly read to you some ink information, but also I did wanna let you know that you can place your ink channels anywhere you want. That is the plus two acro rip that let's say uh, your white went out and you need a new channel. You can turn this white off and turn the other one on, load it up and keep moving and then come back to your problem later and you won't cause any stress to your print head because you have shut down that clogged channel. Um, the ink limit is, uh, for white is often higher than the color inks provided. 
to provide a denser layer of ink to act as a solid backing for the color layer. So for best results, you want to use the lowest possible values that provide a dense layer of ink on your film or garment or object. It is possible to print too much ink to the interface of the object, which could compromise the quality of your print. In cases such as DTF printing, UV printing, as the volume of ink on the object increases, it starts to pull, allowing the ink to migrate within the print, causing colors to blend together and potentially causing your white layer to start mixing with the color layer below. The recommended values are 15 to 20% at 1440 by 1440 DPI and 25 to 30% 2880 by 1440 DPI. You may want to use a slightly higher value for white so there is a denser layer of white over the color to act as a strong backing. These values provide as a general guideline for the lowest values to provide a reasonable dense layer. Now these you know, certain factors that play a role, two channels, one channel, four channels, three channels of white. All right, so this is where I learned a few things, and it is here in the ink curves. The curve graph allows you to adjust the intensity of the ink channels you apply to the curve to, and can help you make an image more vivid by making certain colors stand out more by adjusting the hue and gamma values for each channel. The curve grid has two planes, the vertical plane, and that plane represents the range for the color channel, and the horizontal plane, which represents the gamma value for the color that is being adjusted. Right now I have black. Clicking anywhere on the curve, the lines will add a point which can be moved anywhere and adjusted on the grid. grid. So I made a point here, made a point here, made a point here. Okay. The higher the point is on the grid, the darker the hue of color that is being adjusted will be. The lower it is on the grid, the lighter hue it will be. Further to the right on the grid, the point is placed, the lower the gamma value will be for the channel that is being adjusted. The further the dot is to the left, the higher it will be. You can add multiple additional points to the curve for final control, finer control over vibrancy and intensity of any given color. You can apply the curve to in each channel individually, or you can click on the link button and it will apply these to all channels. this little link button here. The brightness and contrast, this setting allows you to adjust the intensity of how luminous the image will contrast, allows you to adjust the contrast of the image, allowing you to make differences in color and detail more or less noticeable. All right, so you adjust these um, accordingly. ICC profile by checking use, you can enable the use of predefined ICC profiles, the 1390, the 1800, the P600, uh, P600. they have um, ICC profiles from DTG Pro, but if you're adding your own, um, you can do so as well. The ICC intent options, as you see here. Perpetual photo changes all of the colors in the image to a relative color in the CMYK color gamut, allowing the printer to print the image with the quality that is closest to that of the image being displayed on your screen. Relative color metric changes all of the colors in the image, especially those that are out of the CMYK color gamut of the printer to the nearest approximate color that is CMYK color gamut. In saturation, 
It keeps the saturation levels of the colors in the image intact while adjusting other factors of the colors in the image color gamut, such as hue and the gamma value, um, to better fit a smaller color gamut that the printer uses. While ICC profiles may be designed for a specific printer model, they may be usable with other printer models. And in terms of gamut, when referring to the color space on your computer display or printer, describes the range of colors that are available to either your display on your computer or the range of colors that are available on your printer. Because the CMYK color gamut the printer uses is significantly smaller than sRGB color gamut, that of your own computer display color, reproduction will not always be exact as the printer can't accurately reproduce a large number of colors that are available in sRGB. The purpose of an intent with ICC profile is to allow a number of ways to best attempt to recreate them within the color gamut the printer has. When we move on over to the white layers tab. Now guys, this is a manual that comes with your AcroRip software. I'm literally just relating information that everybody absolutely looks over and ignores. Um, so 100% white under any color pixel. This creates a layer that places white under any colored pixel that is present. It's literally what it does. Gradient white under any color pixel does just that. It will create a gradient white output for every colored pixel in the image. You can use white ink curve to, um, to adjust the level of detail that, that the gradient applies. Um, gradient only applies to shades of black and gray a white mask is created for all other colors. So black and gray will not be um, given a layer of white when using gray. Fill area will fill all of the image. So it'll be one, one white square. 100% white, and I'm going to show you just so you can see. It will leave 100% of the image with white. Gradient under any color pixel. As you see, every colored pixel is gradient except for the black and grays. If you wanted to change that, you would change your starting point and also change um, the percentage. The higher you go, the more of the black it'll have or a layer onto the black. White gradient negative. This is a setting that will create a, right, a white gradient negative of the image. A negative image will make dark areas white and white areas black. And other colors of shades gray. And white gradient positive is just that, the opposite. This section will create white gradient pos positive for the image. A positive will make dark areas black and lighter areas white. And spot tiff uh, RGB, it'll choose um, Hold on. See, these are illustrations. So we'll go into detail of what this is on a separate video. Black handling. If you wanted to remove all the black from an image, mind you, you can, um, the lower the setting, the more shades of black will be um, detected from Acrorip. So removing it one percentage at a time as you see it's removed most if i keep going it'll start to take the dark from the colors if you see now all the shades that are dark will start to lose colors so you don't want to go too much it's usually just a couple of percentage by two or three if that all right White colors 
channel. Here you can turn on and off your channels um, as needed. Here you can set the material. Let's say you have a red shirt and wanted to see what it looked like with the uh, orange. I mean, that's what it'll be like. You can change it to whatever and this is what it'll look like against something of that color. The white choke. The final con configuration at the bottom of the page is to adjust the white layer print size offset with relation to the color layer. For every pixel, it changes the offset for the white layer up to 20 pixels per side. This feature is to allow you to keep the white layer from overlapping the color layer, causing a color layer to be outlined in white. By adjusting the offset, you're telling AcroRip to move the outer edges inwards within the boundaries of the color layer. Check the accept white only to apply the offset to the white layer of the print. And then the print dialog box file print. Here's where you will make a series uh, where you will see all your settings. You want to ensure there are two group boxes named white setting and color settings, which provide information on the resolution that are being used to print the white color and color layers and allow you to set how many copies you want of each print. If you do not have the white plus color setting checked, the white and color copy setting will print the white and color separately. To have them print as part of a single print, check white plus color then you make sure you have a one underneath each and if you have a printer that cuts the film you would use paper cut and tumblr changing this setting will reduce the number of print nozzles that are used to print width for both black and color ink channels. Using a lower number of print nozzles will provide a better quality in graphics that have narrow lines and detail in them. As can be the case with vector image based images, please note that using lower number of print nozzles will increase your print time. All right, and I think that pretty much covers most of Acro Rip. Then you will hit print. Um, please keep in mind my overall um, my overall information would be on the colors panel, or I'm sorry, printer panel. The dots. I use mix because, well, I read that and it has stuck with me. And I've been trying to share it uh, with everyone so you guys can know that mixed dots or small, medium. Small, medium, small plus medium or mix. Not any of these. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Um, this is for Echo Rip 10 or 11. The difference in 11 would then be add image. Thank you for watching guys. I hope this helps narrow down. Have a great day.